You look normal. Are you really sick? <laughs> I always look normal unless I tell people that I'm sick. Else it's, it's not very obvious my symptoms. Yeah. I'm 46 years old and I suffer from an autoimmune uh, neuromuscular disease that will causes weakness to all parts of my muscles. Uh, that can be my uh, limbs, um, my swallowing, breathing. Yeah, it's called myasthenia gravis. It's the kind of question that comes from a society that judges people based on their appearances. So when people ask me that, the most of the time, the first reaction I give them is a deep pain stare. The autoimmune disease is the type of disease that your own immune system is turning against you. Somehow it targets your own organs as um, enemies. I have uh, multiple autoimmune diseases actually. So uh, first is primary sclerosing cholangitis, autoimmune hepatitis, and ulcerative colitis, where my immune system attacks my colon, my liver, and my bowel ducts. I was 38 two years ago when I was diagnosed with autoimmune encephalitis. Um, it's an autoimmune condition which attacks the brain and the result is that I now suffer from short-term memory loss. I don't really tell people openly that I'm sick um, unless the situation comes up that I have to tell people. So they tell me things that I have to do after the meeting and then I tell people like, oh actually you have to keep reminding me because you know, I have this condition. My condition is called lupus nephritis. Uh, in short, it's called SLE. I remember there was a, once I was in the army, so I was feeling um, a bit unwell, like a headache of sorts. I went to see the, the we call it the uh, army doctor. At first he thought I was choking, but when he saw my records, right, his face turned to very pitiful and sorrowful. I said, oh, you're so, so poor thing, you know. Uh, why not? How many days of MC do you want? I give it to you. Actually, my life is like a time bomb. My health is like a time bomb. Meaning to say that touch wood, there can be a relapse anytime. Okay, uh, my kidneys can, can be rejected anytime. Internally, um, things are just hanging on the thread. How did you find out about your condition? I was diagnosed at the age of 19, so I have this uh, drooping of eyelids. I thought it's something wrong with my eyes, so I went to this um, ophthalmologist. Yeah. So they were saying that, hey, no, it's not due to your eyes, it's due to some neuro uh, disease related uh, condition. He just tell me that, okay, this gland too many antibodies and it's attacking your other muscles. Antibodies is supposed to help you but you have too many. So once you remove already, your condition will be better. It's a gland quite near to my heart, this area. So you can see the scar here actually. I didn't know that you will leave such a long permanent scar here. I, I, I never expected that, yeah. Once out of the uh, operating data, right? Normally, like maybe one week later, you should go to the normal ward from the ICU. But I stayed there for almost like two and a half months because I, I couldn't breathe on myself. I need to uh, rely on the respirator. So, um, in fact, I just wanted to end my life that time. I just tell my sister, just bring me back. I'll be very happy if I can just touch home and die on the spot, I would be also happy. <laughs> yeah. One of my friends in school pointed it out. She was like, your, cat, your eyes look like cats. Because they were yellow. And then, uh, at first I didn't think much of it. I just thought maybe it's the lighting or something. Uh. But then like, slowly over time, um, like, I felt like my skin got a bit more yellow. And then I started having a lot of stomach pains and cramps. Then had a lot of like bloody diarrhea. Sometimes the stools were also pale like clay, clay colored stools. My parents actually like brought me to the A&E because of that. Because they felt like something's really wrong already. I mean, you're pooping blood and all that. At 13 years old, I didn't really know what my condition was. But then I felt upset because they, they gave me medicine that made me gain weight. So I actually started to cut myself. Yeah, so it didn't last very long though because my teacher found out then she scolded me. Like she talked me out of it. I don't know if she remembers how I'm thank you, thankful to her for that. When I was about eight, nine years old, I recall one fine day when I was going to pass urine, then I had a burning sensation in my urine, okay? and my legs started to swell. And when I wake up from my bed, I also uh, felt my eyes were swollen. So my mother was a nurse, 
and she felt that something was very amiss. So we went to the Chinese sensei and the sensei uh, said that it's probably a chronic kidney condition, referred me to the specialist and yes, it's true. They said that it was because of lupus and the eventuality will be kidney failure, right? So that was the time when I remember me and my mom were in the hospital uh, ward and then we both broke down and, and, and cried. My girlfriend came home and she found me sitting on the couch, staring into space and chewing on a bag of cotton buds. And she asked me, as you, you, know, you would expect, um, what are you doing? And, but I didn't, couldn't answer her. And that's when she got worried uh, yeah, and sent me to A&E. When I got discharged, I mean, I kind of always, always questioned like, you know, why did this happen to me? The statistic for this illness is like one in 250,000 people a year. So why did I need to be that one person, you know? So that, that was kind of difficult for me, yeah. Can you be cured? Yeah, I think that's another very common question that people ask me. My immune system kept attacking my liver until my liver actually failed to work. I had to go for a transplant. That was when I was 18 years old. I remember one of my friends asked me whether, oh, it's great that you're going transplant, right? Then uh, I got a bit upset at her because like, I feel like everyone thinks that transplant is a cure-all. But they don't realise that transplant is the option that the doctor only gives when you reach end stage. Like when it's really bad enough that nothing else will work. I personally, as a recipient or beneficiary of a kidney transplant, a living kidney transplant, my brother actually said that if I'm not his brother. Okay, probably he won't, he, won't, he won't donate the kidney. After the kidney transplant, the cocktail of medicines was is greatly reduced, but I still have to take medications every day because of the anti-rejection. Actually, I won't even think that I will recover fully. In fact, I will think that I, will, I may go anytime. Um, initially, when I was diagnosed, the doctors were telling me, yes, uh, there was a good chance I would make it to 100% recovery. But last therapy session, they were saying, oh, you're probably never going to be able to get back to 100%. And the analogy that they used was, um, if a car gets into an accident, even if you go to the workshop and repair it, it's still not going to be brand new. At that session, when I received the news, um, I kind of like slammed the table and just walked out the door from my therapy session and said like, forget it, I'm not coming back here anymore. There were quite a few episodes of depression uh, and I actually had to see like a psychiatrist and a psychologist. They told me to not to focus on why it happened to me but to focus on how much I've improved since I came down with the illness. Um, I think actually being here today is kind of a major improvement for me as well. Uh. Till now, there's no cure for my condition. I mean, those medical research, when they want to find a cure, they also think about uh, return on investment, right? If that medicine can cure a bigger population, of course, they will go for that first. Mine is a smaller one. Maybe there is uh, might be a very long, long way. Mm. Do I feel unfair? Uh, I don't feel unfair because at least there's still medication to let me live, lead a life. I still can breathe, just that. I need to take on long-term medication and I might be experiencing a lot of side effects. But it's okay. I mean, there's still other medicine to control my these side effects. I still can breathe, that's the most important thing. Mm. Do people see you as less capable? When I started to apply for a few jobs after I graduation, they have a, a list, a very comprehensive form I have to fill up where I have to write down my medical condition. So I have to be tr honest and truthful, so I wrote down. And subsequently, there wasn't much interviews. After, there wasn't any interviews after that. In my heart, I sort of knew that it was because of my medical condition that made me a less suitable candidate because both had the same results and both had the same CCA and both had the same experience, leadership experience, so to speak. How come you choose the one that has the serious medical condition? Yeah, so I, I knew that I have to be uh, take the self-employment route. I was actually very open about, about my condition in the office. And actually, very surprisingly, a lot of my colleagues are very understanding of my, of my condition. Uh, um, I was a project manager before I got sick, uh, and that involved a lot of keeping track of deadlines and all that kind of thing. 
But since I can't do that anymore, um, the company and my colleagues have found me other work to do. Uh. I think, yes, people do see me as less capable. But I think it's also with the understanding of my illness. Um, so it's, it's not a case of me being lazy or whatever that I can't do certain things, but it's, I just can't help it. It's a medical, official medical condition. Um, so yes, they see me as less capable, but I'm okay with that. Um, it's, uh, I do my best. Uh. Till date, most of my colleagues don't know about my condition. So they don't see I'm less capable. I still can, in fact, I'm more productive than them sometimes. <laughs> and uh, my boss gave me equal opportunities. Sometimes he knows that this is quite a stressful project, but he knows that I'm still capable and responsible. In terms of appraisal, I'm equal. Mm among all my colleagues, yeah. Actually, I went for one uh, meet-up, meet uh, in a way, matchmaking session, okay? So I was very honest because, uh, with the people I meet that, uh, that I actually have this autoimmune disease, that kind of yeah, condition. So I was being treated as a different class of person in a way. Like, so um, he doesn't want to continue because of my medical condition. I always feel that there is good apples around, just that the timing may not be correct. Because there's always very nice stories whereby, okay, guys are even willing to take care of their sick companion for life, that kind of thing. So I feel that when the time is right, I will also find that right person. Mm. My classmates don't seem to think that I, I'm doing as much as them. Yeah, so I feel like people who don't really know me will look down on me. There was this um, girl that I thought I was friends with in school. But then we had to do a group project together. And I thought she understood my problems because uh, she was like one of the only two that I talked to mostly in class. But then it turns out that she complained to another friend like that I did, that she felt that I didn't do my part in the project and that she was thanking everything. She said something like, uh, so what if she has medical problems? Because everyone also has their own problems. So I felt really betrayed by that. To be honest, I'm not really disappointed because I feel like I've proven myself enough to those that, who's those thoughts that I care about. If I spend my time being angry at people, I'll just get more tired out. Should I pity you? Why should you pity me? Because uh, I still lead the same life as you and sometimes even better than you. So I don't need people to uh, give me better treatment or see me as a lower privileged person. No, you don't need to. Yeah, we are all equal. I would say my faith, my religion has helped me a lot uh, whereby I learned from my mentor in my life, um, actually I'm someone who is much more fortunate than others. Made me feel like, hey, there's always hope. I used to be very low self-esteem, very low confidence because of all my scars. But then I was taught what beauty is. It's about inner, so I can also shine as beautifully as people. I don't really like being pitied, but I prefer being pitied rather than having my problems brushed off. Because at least if you pity me, it means you feel sympathy for me. So you you understand that I'm going through something that is a bit bigger than other like what other kids my age go through. And it's a form of acknowledgement because validity is something that I think most people with illnesses struggle with, especially those with invisible symptoms. <laughs> if you can be normal for a day, what will you do? Wow. Maybe you get pissed drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got this dream that I want to go Disney World with my mom and ride the, all the roller coasters there. Even though it's a bit late, but at least I want to experience some of the happiness that other people went through. After transplant, my symptoms were mostly gone. Before that, my skin was actually yellow, like totally yellow. So I couldn't like wear nice clothes or that. I didn't want to wear, I didn't want to dress up well. I didn't really want to like do the things that normal kids would want to do. Because during that time, I felt like, what's the point? So now is like the time for me to <laughs> awaken as a 
<laughs> nature. I hope I can be in those less developed countries whereby um, very poor uh, living condition one, where I can teach the students. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Because of my medical condition, I cannot join all this volunteering work. I think that's what I would love to do. The first thing that came to my mind is uh, to, to be able to drink water. A kidney dialysis patient can only drink 500 ml of water every day. We feel thirsty 24-7. Yeah, and every drop of water, especially ice water, that's my favorite when I was having, when I was in dialysis, right? It's, to us, it's, it's precious. And I recall once after the kidney uh, transplant, okay, I, the doctor even advised, you need to drink as much water as possible. I was so happy, I glubbed down one ice mountain, one litre of water. I just drink, glug, 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 right? And I went to the shower, when I was showering, I was drinking, drinking water drinking the tap water and everything. So it was, it was a release. Even drink, simple things like drinking water, I don't take it for granted. Yeah. Mm, I, think, I think people with autoimmune disease, it's, um, I just want to say, hang in there. Life is not over, even though you come down with a disease. Um, there will always be somebody who is willing to support you and see you through it. Uh. I think the best Think the best way to know what to do for another patient is if you ask them what they like, they want you to do. I think what hurts the most is that people ask you to go out, and you have to keep saying no because you're tired, and then they actually stop asking. But the thing is that if you keep asking, right, then on days that I feel well, I will say yes because like, I rather I want to have that option. I cannot be like strong like other boys. So I studied very hard, you know, I, I scored well academically. Actually, deep inside, I felt inferior. Sometimes it is our mind and our heart that suffers the disability. Even when you meet obstacles, how can you overcome it and stay, still stay so happy and hopeful? I feel like everyone is given the opportunity to be happy. It's just that you don't really realise that you can be happy too. When you meet our profiles, you might not realise that they have autoimmune diseases. Most of them suffer from invisible symptoms, and so it may be hard for us to notice their pain. As a society, let us be kind to one another. We never know when someone might need some kindness. Do you know of any autoimmune diseases that are not mentioned in this video? Share with us in the comments below to spread awareness for these diseases. If you enjoy our Can Ask May episode, you can watch more on our playlist over here. Click on the notification bell below to get notified of our latest release episode.